Hi, this is Linda Noss, and this is the fourth video on the concentration game series. Um, so this, in this section, I'm going to try to get the pictures to show up a little bit and um, figure out how to put a picture on a button. And so first thing I had to do was I had to go out and get a bunch of pictures. And I want my pictures to be kind of random and not the same every time you play the game. So I went out and got just a whole bunch of pictures here. And you can see what I did over here in the um, folder. I took a bunch of snippets of pictures I found on the web that I liked. And I just, um, then I have to take little pieces of them. And, but I try, when I tried to snap the picture, I tried to make it as square as possible. Because I am going to be resizing the pictures to be the same size as the button. But I don't want them to get pulled out of shape. So I, I just went and got a bunch of pictures I liked. You'll notice the way that I named them, and this is I think this will be important for when we actually start picking random pictures. They all are named exactly the same, except for there's a counter here. So I'm going to be picking like a random number between 0 and 19, and then putting the picture in there. I won't be doing that in this video, but I'll, I, that's my plan for the next video on how to get the pictures in there randomly. So <clears throat> let's get started on putting the pictures in there. So once you get your pictures that you want and put them in the same folder as the concentration game and the button and the grid you actually have to figure out how to put the pictures on there. Um, I experimented with a few things but I found that working with the button class was the best way to do it. So what I did was I just created a P image object. And I'm just going to call that current image and then down here in the constructor you have to tell the computer what current image is going to be. And I'm just going to play around with one image just to see if I can get it working. Um, so just pick one of these and try to get it working and then later on we'll try to get different ones in there. So I'm just going to start with image0.png. So um, G0.png. Okay, so what that does is it actually takes the image out of the folder and loads it into the variable current image, which is an image object. <clears throat> and then what happens is, is you want the image to appear when the button is clicked on. So, um, that's where it gets a little tricky because you need to make sure that not only is it clicked on but the mouse is pressed. So what you want to do is you want to say if and you want to say mouse pressed which I think is a probably capitalize this, yeah. When it turns pink you can see that it recognizes it. And I want to make sure that the mouse is within the limits of the rectangle. Now, in order to do this, I actually have it in another program, and I want to make sure I get it right. So, um, I have it over here, this program. And I want to make sure I have it right, and it's called, I created a method called overrec. And you can see that it takes an x, y, and a width and a height. So basically that's the limits of the rectangle. And then you just basically check to see if the mouse is within the limits of the rectangle. So if the mouse x is between the x and the x plus the width, which basically means the x of where the rectangle is right now, or the rectangle plus the width of the rectangle. So if it's within the x of the rectangle, and then you do the same thing with the y, um, then basically you are over the rectangle, so it's true. Otherwise you're not. So I'm just going to grab this right here. And this is another method I'm going to throw into my game. And this is checks to see if mouse is within the rectangle. I say the button. 
actually run checks. checks. Okay, so basically there is that. So again, it's just checking to see if X and Y are the top left hand corner of the rectangle, and then you got the width of the rectangle and the height of the rectangle. And so it just sees if it's within the X arena or if it's in with the and within the Y arena, then you're within it. So basically you just want to take this whole thing here. So you want to check to see if the mouse is pressed, and you want to see if you're in the rectangle. So I'm just going to do this. And then I can replace these things here with the variables I actually want to use. And the mouse, I mean the button object has an X button and a Y button. So I'm going to take this here and put it here. So X is X button. Y is Y button. And then you got button width and button height. So here we go. I'm just going to put those all in there. So essentially I'm just... So if you're inside the rectangle and the mouse is pressed, well what you want to do? You want to change the image. So you want to say something like Um, I'm going to put the ending one there. I'm going to put the else there. So this is all set to go. So I want to keep that piece. But now I want to say uh, image dot current image comma and I want to make sure that the current image and you got to put the top left here in the corner where you want the image to be. And it's basically, I want it to be on the top left-hand corner of the button. So I'm going to put that right there. So let me just see, first of all, that's everything I need. And then let's just see if it runs. This is very exciting. So you can see that no matter where I click, but you'll see the image is bigger than the button, so that's no good. And then down here you can see it just stays there even when I let go. It's no fun. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to resize the image. So up here where it says current image, I want to actually say current image dot resize. And I want it to be the same size as the button. And the button size is button width and button height. And I think I have those down here right next to each other. So I'm just going to grab them from down here and paste them in there. And now the button should be resized. And this is why I wanted to make sure the original picture was as square as possible. Because when you resize this, um, if you have a tall, thin picture and you resize it, you're going to suddenly the person that's tall and thin is going to be short and fat. So basically, it's going to be out of proportion. So you want to make sure that you, when you snip your pictures, you get them as close to square as possible. You can eyeball it, but at least on my Mac, it tells me like how big my picture is when I'm clicking and pulling and dragging that rectangle over the picture. So let's see where we are now. There we are. There we are. There we are. So this is kind of exciting. I've got the pictures to come up. So in the next video, I'm going to figure out, first of all, how to make the picture stay there for a second. And we have to kind of decide how we want that to work. And then um, figure out how the random pictures are put in there. So we'll see you next time.